Catacomb Scatter Terrain. As if this set wasn't creepy enough already. Hey there and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week marks the final video in my Catacomb series. Man, I had such a great time in this series. I really enjoyed working with all these skeleton models from Tiger Skull RPG. Each pose was so unique, I could have made 10 times the amount of scattered terrain and catacomb walls and you name it for this series. You can find a link to his site down below as well as a link to everything I used from Amazon if you want to pick up some supplies. And if you want to see more in this series, let me know down below as well as maybe some ideas of things you'd like to see in this series in the future. Also, Firelight Fables Candles will get you 10% off using discount code TWC10 at checkout for your entire order. A small kickback will come to me, helping out the channel, so check that out as well. All right, if you're ready, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. All right, so the last video in our Catacomb series, for now anyway, I'm going to kick it off with the Land of Shadows candle from Firelight Fables Candle. And this is a really fun video because this is just where we get to let our imagination go. We don't really have any plans for this. And I want to have sort of a kind of a skeleton spawner, something I've always kind of wanted to make. And we're going to do that by creating a pile of coffins. Now you can use your Proxon, you can use an Alpha Knife, whatever you have laying around. And to get the dimensions right, we're going to take one of the skeletons from the Scattered Remains collection from Tiger Skull RPG. Find his link in the description below if you want to check out his website and grab some of these for yourself. Now once we have the shape of the coffin correct, we're going to cut it out with an X-Acto knife all around the perimeter, about maybe an eighth of an inch in. Slicing the top and bottom off, that way we can put the base on and have a removable lid if we want. Now I don't know if coffins ever had little openings like this in it or not, but I thought this was a cool little touch and I wanted to do it, so here it is. Adding a little bit of wood texture to that and we're all set and ready to paint already. I added a Mod Podge mixture, which you're going to want to add to that because this is a very thin piece of foam. And then a dry brush of a light gray. And now we're all ready to put it together. A simple build easy you could crank a bunch of these out if you want to make a bunch of these spawners for your game session and this was really fun so this piece right here broke on me when I was working with it and instead of setting it aside and making another one I figured let's put one of these on here and have it broken make use of everything the base is a little bit of chipboard now this is really awesome this is about three weeks old I pulled this out of my trash can this was used in the first video on the tile uh, floors, and then I used it on the walls, now I'm using it on the scattered terrain, and literally that came out of my trash can. So, you know, if you can find a airtight container and make a bunch of this stuff and place it in it, you'll have your very own texture paste that will last a very long time. Now I'm heating this up, or really adding a little bit of uh, dry air to it just to kind of keep moving. Don't do that right on your cutting mat. I actually ended up uh, having a little bubble pop up on mine after doing that. Now we get to add some more skeletons. Again, I really just had a pile of these on my table and I uh, was just looking at them as I was making and placing these coffins down as to where I want to place all these. And this is where you can really get creative, let your mind kind of run wild as you're placing them on here. If you're enjoying this video and my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. Now I want to show this and point this out. Don't be afraid to modify your craft as you're working on it. You can see I cut this and broke it in half. It's all painted, it's been washed, and now I've got pink showing. It's not a big deal because you can always add a little bit more wash, do a dry brush over it, and honestly you can never tell that I cut that to begin with. You see that little uh, rise in the piece of scatter right there? Not a big deal. This is a thin piece of chipboard. You can bend that, which is what I did when I was done, and it sits perfectly flush on the table. That's the nice thing about working with chipboard as opposed to foam. 
And I went back with another black wash to just, you know, dirty up everything that was really stuck in the mud or whatever. Lots and lots of layers. I'll grab a few pigments, place them around here, and um, yeah, make sure to, you know, add that to everything, the skeletons in the coffin, all over the ground. And once that's done, a little spritz of rubbing alcohol will lock all that in place. All right, on to our next craft. I knew as soon as I saw these skeletons that were chained up to like a wall that I had to make a crucifix on these. Now I know some people might say this didn't exist in a catacomb or whatever. I, it doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> you know, in my world it exists. Um, and you know, honestly, I don't plan on just using these in my catacomb. Uh, I've got a lot of uses where I can have these on the game table in an exterior setting as well. Uh, another cool feature which I forgot to actually add to these was a couple of crows I wanted to have landing on these posts. So keep that in mind, that'd be a cool little addition. Now, these barbecue skewers looked really plain. How do we remedy that? More of our texture paste that we made. I mean, look at that. That looks totally awesome now. It looks like a solid piece of wood, right? Um, it doesn't look like a barbecue skewer anymore. So yeah, make use of that. Hitting this up with a black wash, kind of knocking the color down a little bit. I didn't want a really brown post. Now I'm breaking these chains off. I'm saving the chains for later on. And now we got to work on the base. And again, this, I was sort of just winging it here. I took my texture roller, textured these up, split it right in half. And we need to weigh this down because not that they're really top heavy, the miniatures and the Barbecue skewers are, you know, really light, but I didn't want to have any issues with these while they were on the game table. So we're gonna add a couple, uh, I think these are like maybe one and a quarter inch washers into the base. And there was enough room actually to add three of them. I only put two, two is enough. <laughs> and I, I had to show this. So I was, it was late at night. I was trying to get a clean take to show what I was doing here. And I kept getting hot glue all over my hand and I just, it got like really annoying at one point. And I thought, all right, right around here, I was like, I'll get rid of the hot glue and then just show this portion. And I still had hot glue everywhere. So anyway, I don't know, I thought it was funny. All right, a little hot glue, you could tell I don't learn my lesson. Adding a couple of these washers to the base and we're ready to, uh, you know, start notching some of these out. You can use an X-Acto knife and like a clay sculpting tool to pop these sections out. I use this hot wire knife. Just take your time when you go through the glued portion that you don't pull really quick and slice the entire thing off. And it doesn't matter how deep you go in these grooves, you're not gonna see behind them because we're gonna fill them all with skulls from the Tiger Skull RPG sequential skull files. Now lining up the center of these two squares, I'm just using a clay sculpting tool. Pull that out, we're all set and ready to go. It's gonna mark our hole for the crucifix as well. And while you're at it, make a whole bunch of them. Here's the paint scheme that I used on this. Nothing too fancy. Making sure to get some decent edge highlights on here because it's really gonna help make the skulls pop out and stand um, out from the rest of the craft once we're done. All right, back to our wash. I wanted to go with a black wash here because I wanted this scatter terrain to stand out a little bit different from the walls and the floor of the entire rest of this catacomb series. Taking a little butcher's twine, I just painted this with a beastly brown and I'm going right over those shackles. You could actually just glue these right to the post and have the shackles on it. That would look really cool too. And I'm just using a little bit of super glue to hold these in place. Be careful, that super glue sets very, very quick on the butcher's twine. All right, now you know me, I love details. I love modifying things and having fun with my crafts. That's what we're gonna do here. This guy is going to be falling off at the arms <laughs> from the crucifix. So we're gonna attach his arms to the top and we're gonna scatter the rest of his bones on the base of uh, this crucifix. And I just wanted to show just a little bit more edge highlighting here with this paint. All right, the awesome sequential skulls from Tiger Skull RPG. You can see how these just pop right into place and you don't need a lot of hot glue on the back of them. 
All right, now for the rest of these little pieces of bone, you could use Eileen's tacky glue if you want. I use just a very little bit of hot glue just to kind of keep me going. And finally, to make this all cohesive with the rest of the series, we're gonna add just some more pigments over all the skeletons and the base and we're all set and these as well are ready for the game table. Well, that wraps up the Catacomb series here on the channel. One series that I really enjoy doing. If you want to see more of it in the future, let me know down below in the comments. And for the next video here on the channel, it's going to be a new building for my medieval village that's going to be based off of a very popular TV series. And I'm just about wrapping up the plans for that. And speaking of plans, you can get yourself a set of plans mailed to you on the day the videos come out by joining my contractor tier on patreon i've got a lot of other cool tiers there as well so check out all those perks and support over there that really helps fund the channel and helps it grow hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content here on the channel and until next time i'll see you around